Michael, are music supervisors just looking for something very specific? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, they may be trying to replace something that was tempted in. It could be, uh, and again, the, the context moves around a lot, or, or the target moves around a lot depending on the context. So let's say that a music soup is working on a feature film and that the producer of that film, uh, and the, maybe the producer and director, um, somebody like Cameron Crowe that's very, very music-centric. So in that case, uh, the producer or director may have asked the music supervisor to temp stuff in or the editor to temp music in that they went into the production knowing, I want something like that song in that scene. And later, of course, they find out that it's far too expensive to license it. So then the music supervisor is tasked with coming up with something that's got the same vibe. And, and vibe is a very kind of nebulous term, but it means um, similar tempo, similar era, similar style slash genre, um, and, and has kind of the same effect, emotional effect and sonic effect within that scene. They have to be very careful, of course, to not put the word out and have people try and uh, rip off a song. Um, so they may say, I want something that sounds like Miss You from the Rolling Stones, but don't get too close. Some people will try and emulate that a lot and get away with, uh, I've walked right up to the precipice of a lawsuit and it sounds a lot like that, but I'm not gonna get sued because it doesn't technically break the rules. I personally don't endorse that. Um, but in those cases, yes, music supervisors do look for something specific because they're trying to please their client, which is the director or producer. Other times, the music supervisor isn't thinking so much in musical terms or trying to replace a specific song so much as they're trying to create a mood. So they may describe what they're looking for uh, by saying something like, I need a very stripped down, intimate song about falling in love. Um, other times they may say, I need an instrumental that's going to add a little zip to this scene and they want something, it, the translation of that is give me something up-tempo, probably in a little higher, happier register. Um, and so music supervisors will describe things, that they're working in a picture environment and they are trying to bolster the mood maybe even help create the mood. They may have a scene that's flat and they don't want it to be flat. So the music supervisor is tasked with finding music that's gonna elevate it. So it's not always that they're looking for something specific. Okay, so the big question would be, how do you get to a music supervisor? How do you find out and get, get your music to them? Well, of course, my favorite way <laughs> would be using taxi, sure. um, but I am a little biased. Now, that said, um, look, there are so many directories out there and resources online where you can look up the names of music supervisors. Um, the reason that I created taxi was most people, frankly, don't have the time because they have a day job, they have a family, um, and they can't spend eight or ten hours a day reaching out to music supervisors who, frankly, in most cases, really don't want to be reached out to. Mm -hmm. It's not like they've got a shortage of music. It's, uh, you know, if several hundred people a week are contacting them, um, that's a lot of work on their end, and it's also a lot of work on the end of the person pitching their music. So the music supervisors tend to go back to the same sources that they've used reliably over and over for a period of years. Those sources are typically production music libraries or uh, some form of music broker, or in my favorite case, they would use taxi. And, and Frankly, the reason I created the company, it even says in our brochure somewhere, you can do it better on your own. However, uh, for those of you who don't have the time or maybe you don't have the business skills or the communication skills, you're not good at writing a succinct email that gets your point across quickly. By the way, music supervisors don't wanna know that you were the star student in Mrs. McGillicuddy's fourth grade choir class mm -hmm. or that you played Rusty's Rib Ranch you know, four times last year to a crowd of 30 people. They just don't care. What they care about is, do you have the right music for my scene? So if you are articulate, 
you know the rules of the game. You can present yourself as a professional, and you've got the time, and, and you're a diligent person. Um, go for it. You will probably do a better job for yourself than Taxi will do for you because it's your baby. It's your music. If you're not great at business stuff, if your communication skills aren't that strong, uh, and if you don't have the time and the wherewithal to do it, then Taxi is probably a good option. Not that I'm here to sell memberships to Taxi. <laughs>